I'm Katrina, this is Sew and Tear, and today I'm actually out with the clipboard. I have an aerial I printed off for the pasture and hayfield area, and I am going to be trying to identify the trees within this area. I know there's some edible trees, I know there's some useful trees, I know there's some trees that just popped up. Um, the one behind me right here is a catalpa, and It has these humongous seed pods. As far as I know, they're not good for um, eating and I, they don't believe they're good for medicine, but I will be researching all of this once I have my full list. So if you know anything about Catalpa, let me know. Um, I'll probably be like offering seeds later. They do get quite large. This one gets top because it's underneath the uh, electricity lines, but it's all good. Let's find out what trees I have. So start off right next to the catalpa tree. Along this whole um, fence line, there's a lot of these little tiny plums. I call them cherry plums. They're pretty typical of most uh, really old homesteads. And they're kind of all along fence lines. I don't know how many of them are actually planted versus the birds planted them. And then there's also a lot of blackberry here. So I know that, let's continue on. All right, so this right here is blackberry, even though it's a little lighter, it looks like it's a blackberry. And then this is the blackberry that um, we're used to seeing. And then all of these little bushy things, those are those little tiny plums. And there's a good tulpa tree. So this right here, looks like it's some sort of rose with rose hips they're not ripe yet but that is some sort of rose with rose hips and here is a trail looks like this is probably one of the deer trails it goes out that way there's another rose over there so this is my third apple tree there's two over by the house and there's one over here on the edge of the the pasture and so far it hasn't been good let me try it all right i'm trying this later in the season just to see if it's tasty. It, the ones I had earlier in the season were not. So uh, here we go. Ooh. This is decent. It's a different kind than the other two. Um, it's a little too ripe, but It's definitely sweeter than the other one. I'll give it a go. Maybe I just picked them too early or had bad ones before. All right, let's continue. All right, this right here is wheat. I only see one, but it does mean there's a history here, which is helpful to know. So along much of this boundary here, we're gonna have more of these little um, this is that, that little tiny plum. These ones are yellow, I know that. And then we have some red ones. Looks like there's still some on the plants. So that's what, that's what this is. It looks like a cherry, but it's actually a plum. And there's some actually still ripe way up in that tree. If I wanted to harvest the ones up there, I could, but um, I'm likely not because they're very tall. I think these ones were a little tart last time I tried them. I right, even have the sweet and tart. Each one of these has a different flavor, so it's kind of interesting when put them together. Has a bit.
And here it looks like, sorry, here it looks like there's something different. I'm not sure what, this is where the culvert comes out for the blue line. Um, but we have blackberry in there, but then there's this other berry. I don't know what that is. Oh. I'll be identifying the stuff I don't know when I get back. I think I have to review what hackberry looks like, but I want to, the leaves look like a, uh, a yew tree. I'm not sure if that's what it is. I'll figure it out. All right, we have maple, another maple, madrone. Here's another one of the, uh, another one of those uh, plums. And I think the rest of this is, oh, what's this? I thought the rest of this was for those little plums. But this is different. Hi, Bentley. Okay. So this is, I think this is that hackberry. There's the berry and the leaf. There we go. It looks like there are more rows over there and then this is, snowberry and I did see flowers there's some immature berries and a flower to me that one looks like a cherry but I'm not sure and then this one looks like it might be a walnut I'm not sure about this like this one looks like one of those plums more blackberries still ripe end of September nice All right, there's the other elderberry. Right there. All right, this is the other side of the apple tree. I think this is hackberry. I gotta look at it. Okay, I am next to the little cattle shed here, and there are a lot of these little cherry plums, some blackberries, and I think this is hackberry. I really need to learn more about hackberry. Um, it's edible, but I don't really know how it's generally eaten. Um, I believe that's what it is, so I'll show you guys a close-up of that. There's also some poison oak in here. And this is where the this is where the blue line comes down. There is also big leaf maple and an, it looks like an oak. So let's go down this little draw um, and see what we can find. I'm writing everything down. Okay, here is the berry and the leaf. I believe this is hackberry. Okay, so that's where we just were, looking down here. This is an oak. At this point, I'm not going to attempt to name which oak I'm seeing because um, number one, they all have the same function for me. If whether or not I want to collect acorns from them, that will, they all have the same function. They all need to be leached if I do choose to do that and there are so many oak species and I am unfamiliar with a lot of them. I'm familiar with the ones in the Bay Area and that in California and that is pretty much it. There are so many oak species. So right now I'm just gonna point out oaks. If you know for, for Southern Oregon what kind of oaks I'm seeing, feel free to put it in the comments. I, I will learn them, <laughs> just not today. <laughs> And then that right there is another one of those cherry plums. 
And I believe we might have another elderberry down here. Let's check. It's definitely the deer trail. Little poopsies. Yeah, so this elderberry looks like it's already done. Look how defined this trail is, guys. This is definitely the trail to be on. But this is... Okay, this elderberry has a little bit of berries left over there, not a whole lot. There's some up there. The other elderberry looks like we could get berries a little easier. I might try that tomorrow after work. I'm, uh, or maybe just go look at it now. We'll see. You can tell this is a super old elderberry. There's parts that are dead and fell over and then parts that have grown up. But that is elderberry. There's actually quite a few bundles of berries up there. Look like they're just turning ripe, some of them. So see that, the one that, I don't know if you guys can see it, the umble that's like this is not ripe, but they're ripe when they hang like this. It's like, that one up there is starting to, there we go, that one right there is starting to. This is an oak and it looks like it has lots of galls. These are usually caused by a wasp. Some sort of parasite. Let's see what this other big tree is. Oh, it looks like there's... So here's that blue line. Looks like there's some dead stuff that can be cleared out. Oh, there's berries. So let's see what that is. But I did see... Looks like there's some... Rose hips over there. That's good to know. Let's see what these berries are. Oh, they look like, um, let's see. It looks like it might be the, the plums. Oh yeah, these are little plums. But they look like cherries. These ones are pretty good. I'll show you guys. Alright, so here... Here's those plums. And yes, they are very tiny. But, they're still plums. They have a little stem, like a cherry. Those have a little bit of tartness, which is, they taste good. Plant tree. And more rose hips. Those ones are looking like almost ripe. So I'm trying to identify a lot of these trees before they lose their leaves. Um, I feel most of these trees will lose their leaves. Um, I want to identify what they are. So this one, I actually don't know what it is. It has some uh, leaves on it still and it has some seeds on it still. So I'll show you that. So the seeds are like this. And they all come off of like this main stem. And there's a very big seed in there. It's about... So here, here it is. And the seed is that much of it. Between here and here. I don't know what it is. The leaves are very soft, especially on the underside. And... I like that. They're very soft. The stem is soft of the leaf. 
And let's see. The branches appear to be opposite. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. There's a lot of dead branches on there, but they appear to be opposite. So uh, yeah, if you know what this is, let me know. Otherwise I'll be looking it up and uh, we'll go from there. Okay guys, I think it's an ash. Double check me. I think it's an ash. So that's actually, this whole group of trees is that same thing. You can see there's clumps, and then this one has better leaves, it looks like. It almost looks like, oh, look at the butterfly. Oh, hi butterfly, hi butterfly. Uh, this one has a little bit better leaves. You can see this one's, I think it is opposite. Uh, opposite has one here and one here. So there's the branch, they're opposite each other. Some trees are alternate. That's soft. The other one was softer though. They look like the same thing though. I don't know. Anybody know? So this right here has a lot of that knapweed in it. Um, but it, this is where the, the blue line, it looks like kind of a little bit peters out or thickens here. It looks like this probably stays wet. And then over here, I see a bunch of blackberry and um, hackberry. Well, maybe not. Yeah, hackberry and uh, plums, those little plums. And then I do see one garlic right there. So this is that clump. It looks like it's pretty empty inside there. I wonder if animals go there. Oh, and here's something. Here's something else. This looks like some sort of maybe pear. The video hasn't gone up out yet, so I'm inserting this clip. I was looking through one of my books the other night, and I believe what I have here, I thought it might have been a pear, just, just because I've seen like planted pl pears that have these little tiny fruits that really aren't edible. Um, but I'm actually wondering if this is a crab apple. Um, crab apples I'm familiar with are the planted varieties uh, that are, you know, the apples are like that big. But this is the apple. And I think that's what it is. I'll show you the, the leaves and the little, little fruits. So what I'm gonna do is actually try this and see if it tastes like an apple. It's so tiny. Yeah, that's what that is. So this is a crab apple. It's very tart, very tart, but also good. Thick skin, um, very tart. So that's a crab apple. Okay. I'm not gonna collect the crab apples right now. Um, All right, now we know, crab apple. Okay, so behind me is that clump. I'm on the boundary of the property here, and I believe I'm standing pretty much in that second blue line. So I have a blue line on the side of the property going over there, and then on the corner of the property here, there's a blue line with a giant culvert. So um, I do have that here. So I think they actually converge right at that knapweed, so. There we go. There's some teasel here too. Teasel, I've heard. Ouch. So teasel, right here, I've heard can be used to treat Lyme disease. So having a little bit on the property is not a bad thing. <laughs> All right, I'm going to continue into the northern, northern, I guess it's northern, part of the pasture and um, we'll see if we get to the rest of it because it is getting dark. I got caught um, talking with a neighbor for a while, which is good. All right, behind me here is a hackberry. I'm getting more confident in identifying this one. 
Um, I could show you my map, but it's all over the place. Um, if you are trying to draw on a printed aerial, Sharpie is best, even better. Uh, silver Sharpie. I wish they made a silver Sharpie like with a, t a point like this, but they don't. Um, silver shows up the best. Regular pen sometimes doesn't write on it. Um, pencil is also good, but I just snapped the tip of my pencil. So, Hackberry. All right. Now, it does look like this whole side of the hill here has a really big knapweed problem. I think that's because it's more wet on this side. I'm also seeing different types of grass. I don't know all the types. I kind of want to call this rye grass. Does anybody know if that's a kind of rye? It has seeds in there. But you can see, look at that. That's all mine. <laughs> You can see there's lots of different kinds of grasses in the side where there isn't in the in the other side of the pasture, but it is lower. So let's go see what this tree is. It looks like probably a prune, maybe something else, or not prune, a plum, maybe something else with it. Uh, you can tell the this area gets watered. It's a little ridiculous with napweed. Yeah, so there we go. We have we have a plum and then there's something else. What is this something else? Oh, this. You guys know what that is? That's going to be a nut. So these are um, hazelnuts. So that is, that is, and then I don't know what this is. Is that a hazelnut too? Is old one? No, it's not. It's something else. It's whatever this is. Anybody know that one? Huh. Look at this. It's a hazelnut. All right, so this is a hazelnut. I've been seeing very few of them, so I don't know if I'm at, ouch, here, spiky. I don't know if I'm at the very beginning of the season or the very end, but I've seen very few of them. But here is the big reveal. Okay, it's focusing on me. That is a hazelnut. So, sometimes you can crack these with your teeth, but I wouldn't recommend trying very hard. Well, we're gonna take this home and uh, crack it inside. <laughs> Into the pocket it goes. Check your pockets. So next up, again, I would call this a black oak if I was in the area I know oaks, but it's gonna be a deciduous oak of some sort. <laughs> this is a giant tree. Look at this, guys. Look how big that is. Let me show you how big it is. This may be a humongous Douglas fir. The cone I found later is, was incomplete, so it's kind of hard to tell, and I didn't see it on the ground, so let me know. This is an enormous tree. I also have to relearn my conifers. <laughs> Looks like a Christmas tree, right? These little tiny 
little tiny cones. They're probably the male cones. I don't see any cone cones, just the little guys. See those little little cones. Look like they're coming pretty straight off of the oops, pretty straight off of the uh, thing here. I found a cone. Here we go. This is a cone. Well, okay. It just fell apart. Not many of them though. These must be yummy. Let's see if they're yummy. Gotta try them, right? Piney. I just taste pine resin. Okay, so this is the other berry we saw from the road. And the umbles are starting to go down. This is how I harvest them. I harvest the whole umble, and um, usually I taste them first, but I wanted to show you guys what they look like. If these were still like this, they would not be ripe. If these were not waxy, they would also not be ripe. These are blue elderberries. Um, you know, people call them black or blue, but if it's red, totally different story. Um, don't do those. This one's actually a good one. So each individual um, Osbury plant has a different flavor and depending on where you are it has a different toxicity raw. So if you're sensitive to it, um, it can cause you some stomach issues. If you're not sensitive to it, it's going to cause you less. In the Midwest that is stronger than in the West and the ones in Europe, which is what, um, what basically is in most things uh, on the shelves in the store uh, is from a different type of elderberry in Europe that has a much higher toxicity and it has to be heat treated uh, to be eaten. So um, cook them. These make good pies. They make good um, syrup and jelly and uh, all sorts of stuff. Lozenges. You can do lozenges. Um, I'll probably come back and harvest these. Some of the umbles aren't turned yet. So maybe next weekend, if they're still here, I'll, I'll come out and harvest these. And uh, well, then we'll make something. So, yay. Person I bought the property from says there's two elderberry trees. So if we find more, it's a bonus. <laughs> and these are supposed to be good luck to have on your property. Okay, here's another rose. It has lots of rose hips on it. Now, I've only had rose hips wild that tastes good a couple times so um these are not ripe yet there's one that's a little bit more red on the other side let me go get it i'll try it so really they're ripe when they're red this is reddish on one side and orangish on the other so i'm gonna just try one side of it and rose hips are good for vitamin C. It's not bad. I 
that one's actually not bad. Um, so it's really just the outer part that you eat if you're gonna eat it. And then if you're gonna dry it, you could dry the whole thing and make it into tea. Um, that's actually not bad, which is pretty good. It's not the it's not the best I've had, but it's not terrible. Like there's some that you just spit out. And so it's good to know that, that these are good. All right, moving on. Okay, I wasn't sure what this was from afar. I believe I know what it is now. It is a dissected um, leaf, dissected leaved uh, blackberry. So it does have berries on here. It's, they're not quite ripe, but there's a lot of dead dried up ones too. But the berries, actually here, this one's ripe. Now I had to ask someone after I had already been on the property about this one. Um, anyway, berry is like that. It tastes like a blackberry. There's another one that's not quite ripe. So I'll give you a close up of this leaf because to me I didn't know it. I had to have someone identify it for me and um, then once I, once it was identified, it was easy enough to, to know it. Um, in the past I've only known the, um, Himalayan blackberry and a native, uh, native wild blackberry in California. And so, uh, I believe it's still the same native species out here and same <laughs> Himalayan too. But then there is this. Now in pastures, what you'll see happen is you'll see clumping of things in random places. So like there is some poison oak in here as well. Um, but the cattle, when they are exposed to these areas, they clump, they make it clump because they browse on things and then just browse it back to the, that central point. And so sometimes plants can look a little funny. But I am noticing on this hillside specifically, I am finding plantain, which is a medicinal plant, which is really good to use. I'll show you what the leaf looks like, actually. Oh, there's strawberry here too. Okay, there's strawberry on this hill. So the plantain I have here is a different kind that I had where I used to live. This is what the leaf looks like. They're always going to have um, veins that go like this. And then this is the, the flower spire. So it has a much smaller uh, cluster than the English plantain. I don't know what kind of plantain this is, I just know it's plantain. And all plantains can be used the same medicinally. So that is it. Let me show you the close-up of this and the random strawberries that I've been trampling. There's no fruit, but uh, there's leaves. So here's that leaf of the dissected um, blackberry. You can see all the thorns and the berries. And, and these look like that's wild strawberries. That's what it looks like to me. So there's more rows here and over there that have some sort of infestation it looks like. So I'm not sure what that is, but it's some sort of disease or infestation or something. Parasite maybe? Interesting. Alright, this clump has hazelnut and hackberry and whatever that other plant is that kind of looks like walnut, but I don't think it is. It's the other fuzzy one, I think. This is hackberry here. More nuts. All right, so this little area also has understory with strawberry, Oregon grape it looks like is in here and dissected uh, blackberry, leaf blackberries in there as well. 
Okay, this is more blackberry, dissected leaf blackberry. There's snowberry in here. There's an oak that I'm calling black oak until I know better. And that, that kind of looks like a locust. I don't see any thorns, but I'm not sure exactly what that is. It's a little, little tree. All right, we're back to the little creek area, the first one, and here are some acorns. This is the type of leaf. There's acorns, now acorns and their caps. Well, okay, well I just took off the acorns. <laughs> but the caps of acorns can help to identify species. So, focus. Hopefully, hopefully that will help. And I dropped the other one, but I dropped the other one, but hopefully this will be okay. I'm gonna put it in my pocket. All right, guys. So, you think we have time to see the rest of it? <laughs> the sun is already down. All right, guys, we're gonna have a part two. This is gonna be a part one because I know this is gonna be a longer video and I have a pocket full of hazelnuts in my pocket. Hazelnuts. That many hazelnuts. <laughs> so we are gonna have a part two of this video. Um, so we're gonna call this the Northern Pasture separated by uh, by a fence so hopefully that will make sense to me later it's not really maybe northern okay we'll call it northern I hope you enjoy this video um, I am trying to know what I have out here before uh, the leaves go away so that I know you know what it, what I have really <laughs> If I need to harvest something um, or if I like I know there's a walnut out here that I would like to try tapping this winter because you can do um, walnut sugar and then yeah just kind of know where things are I'm not actually mapping mapping what I'm doing is I'm riding on an aerial but I will know where to go and like I know right now I collected hazelnuts there's hazelnuts. Um, I know they're starting to split open, so I should probably check other hazelnuts that I know about and uh, see if I can how many I can find. These don't look to be very productive, but that's fine. Um, they're wild, and I don't have to water them or take care of them. If they want to feed me, that's okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're gonna have part two later. Thank you for joining me for part one. Uh, I'm going to be bringing you guys some more things like this where I'm just figuring things out on the property. Um, and then I do have some videos that I recorded earlier that I should get out. All right. Thank you for joining me. Hit the like if you liked it. Share this around. Share this around so you, you have lots of fun with lots of people going, okay, this is what grows. This is what grows in Southern Oregon. I can plant these things if I don't have them on my property, if you're in, in a, a similar region as I am. Um, and also some wild foods you may not know you can eat. Cause I'll tell you something about me, I like to know what I can eat. <laughs> so uh, we're going to continue doing this. I'm gonna do this throughout the property. I mean, maybe not throughout, throughout, but uh, I want to identify all the plants that I can eat or use medicinally and there's quite a bit here in this just this little little area there's quite a few species uh, in this pastured area so I'm excited all right subscribe if you haven't subscribed share this around and have a wonderful day thank you for watching <laughs>